Welcome to Leadership Conversations brought to you by Lead Like Jesus. I'm Karen Conley, and I am so glad to have you along with us for this episode. I have the privilege of being able to interview um, Christian leaders throughout all the sectors of, of business, nonprofit, church, and, and even outside of that to really learn best practices. And I'm thrilled to have with me today, John Sparks. John, thank you so much for joining us. Certainly, glad to be with you. Well, um, I want to introduce you to um, our audience. Um, as you can tell, if, if you're watching this via video, um, John is uh, displaying his World Vision logo on his shirt. Uh, there you go. Uh, he is the Senior Director of Shared Services at World Vision, um, which is such an incredible organization. If, if people aren't familiar, I encourage you to go check them out online, but they are a Christian nonprofit that help uh, children in impoverished communities, I think in over a hundred countries. So um, it is an amazing organization. And John, I want to ask you all about that, but I also want um, our audience to know you also come with a 12-year military background. Uh, I'm a Navy brat, so anytime I see that, I'm incredibly grateful. Thank you for your service. I know you were um, uh, a surface warfare officer in the Navy, so we, we are grateful for that. Uh, but then you also got your MBA um, at UC Irvine and have spent many years in the finance and IT sector um, in the corporate America before you came over to World Vision. So um, I'm going to pick your brain about a lot of different things okay. uh, across that uh, amount of expertise, but tell us a little bit about um, your role at World Vision. Sure. Well, I, I joined World Vision about five years ago, and at the time it was still kind of early days for building a shared services capability which is a centralized team that, that does certain business functions on behalf of various World Vision offices. So uh, at the time we had a small team in Costa Rica and then one of my first jobs was opening a new operation in the Philippines and hiring and building a team there. And then a few years later uh, we did the same thing in Ghana. And so we now have three uh, office locations where most of our staff are based, about 200 people globally that are part of shared services and we provide those services to uh, over 60 World Vision offices uh, currently, but we're always looking to expand uh, the services we provide, the offices we serve, to both improve the quality and the performance of the process themselves, but also to lower the cost and provide efficiencies to the organization uh, so that more of the donor dollars are being put into the programs directly impacting the children. Wow, that is, uh, systems and efficiency are so important, especially when you're talking about an international ministry. So um, it's exciting to see you use your gifts in that sphere. Um, before we get going and, and I dive into some questions, um, you are a part of the Lead Like Jesus family. Tell us a little bit about how you've been connected and related to, to Lead Like Jesus. Sure, well, my my history probably goes back before I even knew what Lead Like Jesus was, uh, okay. just on a personal level, you know, being in the military, um, having leadership training and, and being in situations right out of college where you're responsible for people and, and not just for their work, but in many cases, really for their lives mm -hmm. uh, because of the danger of the things that we did. Um, you know, I became a student of leadership, uh, was personally interested and read a lot of books and articles and became very familiar with a lot of the theories that were out there. Uh, but then also after graduate school, uh, really focused personally on discipleship and got very involved in various discipleship programs at my church and leading Bible studies and doing Bible studies. And eventually in my brain, it clicked that, hey, there's a lot here in the Bible that seems to talk about being a good leader. And I started looking for things that were specifically related to biblical leadership mm -hmm. and came across the book, Lead Like Jesus. Like, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Wow. Uh, so, you know, read that and um, then worked from that, um, became a facilitator uh, in the early days of the encounter and was doing some encounters at my church. And uh, then after joining World Vision, uh, kind of revisited that and said, hey, I think I can really embed this in my organization here. And so in 2018, I went back to the, the revamped encounter, got certified on the new materials, 
and uh, also went through the biblical disc training and certification. And so looking to, to leverage those um, within shared services, but then more broadly across world vision uh, I'm, uh, so that you know, we can all learn to be better leaders and really follow Jesus' model uh, and how we do that. Well, let me ask you, um, just given what you just said, you, you've obviously um, been through the training previously, and then like you just said, um, in, the, in the revisited version, um, what are the things that as you look back really stand out to you? What do you take away from that training um, that, that maybe if someone is just learning about Lead Like Jesus, maybe just tuning into our podcast and isn't familiar, um, what would they expect as a takeaway if they were to be involved in an encounter like you were? Well, I think there's several parts of it that are, are very valuable. You know, for me, having been a student of leadership and even been a professor you know, in a business school of leadership and strategy and being familiar with all the theories mm. and, and you know, every now and then they might give you an example of, oh, here's a person who is you know, a case study that you can look at. Um, but in all those cases, they're still human, right? They're still people that maybe were a great CEO or a great leader in some other capacity, um, but still had their own failures and it was never permanent or long term. And so the idea that you can take all of the, the theory, but then see it in a very practical way in mm -hmm. a person who demonstrated it perfectly Right. And that you can you can read about and say, okay, I can see what Jesus did in this situation, and I can translate that into how I can then apply that in my own life. Mm -hmm. um, but then the the big value I think in lead like Jesus and taking those stories and looking at Jesus's life is then translating that into models that we can apply, mm -hmm. right? And so looking at things like the ego model. Mm -hmm. And say, okay, we read about this in the Bible. We see how Jesus did these things, but now we're going to break it down and simplify it into something that my brain can better understand and replicate. Or, you know, the way of the carpenter or the spheres of influence or just all the different, you know, aspects that are taught in the book and through the encounters allows you to engage in learning from Jesus and applying it in ways that, you know, make it easier to remember and, and easier to help other people work together to take what Jesus taught us and then apply it uh, on a more regular basis. Well, and I love that your journey actually was making that connection to Jesus as a leader um, and, and then discovering, wow, there's actually this resource that really does bring it in a very practical way so that it can be transferable into your own workspace. For you on a personal level, John, how has Jesus's leadership model influenced you as you have had teams of people under you, whether it was in the Navy or, or currently at World Vision or in corporate America? How, how does his model influence how you're leading? Well, I think kind of before the Lead Like Jesus content, just studying the Bible and spending time reflecting on you know what God has done and what He's done for me and and how um, you know love and relationships are so central to being Christian uh, has certainly you know moved my idea of leadership from my early days of you know certainly being in a military environment a much more command and control just do what I say you know right. trust the people at the top to have all the answers. Uh, to a situation where, you know, I'm much more able to engage with people, you know, trust the team and say, look, everybody has value and something to bring and, and we can all work together. And my job as, as the, the figurehead of sorts, right, the person who's in a, a more senior position is to guide and shape and direct that, but not to be the one to have all the answers and, and tell everybody what to do. Mm -hmm. And so Lead Like Jesus then, you know, certainly crystallizes that mm -hmm. and, and shows us how Jesus did those same things and, you know, was very good about knowing when to be directive and when to give people specific instruction uh, because they didn't know what to do, mm -hmm. uh, but then also how to pick them up when they failed and encourage them and, and build them up and then, you know, move them to the next level and send them back out again to try. Uh, but then ultimately to say, okay, you know, you, you have the capabilities and go do it. Um, and so, you know, that's been a big part of, of my growth and learning, you know, over the 20 plus years that I've been, um, you know, leading people, so to speak. Uh, mm -hmm. But a lot of it's just been God leading me 
and, and my own development uh, to understand you know, how to let him do the work through me. Well, and I love, I love the fact that I'm getting to have this conversation with you because um, to see an example of someone who has the values, has the passion, has the heart for the Lord, wants to be a servant leader, but then to see this tool really enable you to take that to the next level uh, and put like, you know, codify it, put it in a, in a usable package and in, in terms that you can translate into the work world. Um, I, I don't want to throw you and put you on the spot. I don't think uh, this was a question that I had planned to ask you, but we love real life examples. People learn through, you know, stories and examples. Is there anything in your past um, work history as a leader that you can think of an example of whether it was explaining ego, edging God out, or whether it was knowing the difference of, you know, um, whether to be directive or not. Is there any particular example that you can give us of like, wow, there was a victory because I chose um, to lead like Jesus. Yeah, I, I'm sure I have a lot, but um, I, I guess the couple that come to mind that are maybe the most sort of poignant stories in my own career is, is being in a particular role where um, in a public company and in most organizations having annual goals, annual performance reviews, et cetera, um, you know, I was in a job that was uh, what's usually called an individual contributor, right? So I didn't have any team or staff. Mm -hmm. I was in a support function and was working across the organization globally, traveling a lot, working with teams, doing process improvement work, and, and got through, you know, probably into my second year, maybe the end of my third year doing that. And, and I personally felt like we had a great year, or at least that I had a great year. The teams I worked with had done big things literally saving millions of dollars for the organization through the improvements. And at the end of that, my performance rating was the lowest it could be. Mm -hmm. And so I was really struggling with my pride okay. in that situation and, and feeling like I really had done a lot of good things. Mm -hmm. uh, but then having, you know, my organization and my supervisors tell me, no, actually, you know, that was the worst performance we've ever seen, essentially. And at least that's how I interpreted it. <laughs> um, which also then, I don't remember necessarily having any fear in that situation, but probably, you know, some amount of fear then like, okay, well, if, if I did all of that and felt good about it, but they didn't, you know, what does that mean for me and for my career and, and where do I go from here? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, at that point I was still probably largely relying on myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I spent a lot of time in the next few months applying for every job I could find <laughs> and, and trying to get to a, a different job thinking, okay, I've got to get out of here because this isn't working the way I feel like it should be. Mm -hmm. uh, even though I was satisfied with the work and the people I was working with and felt like it was contributing, mm -hmm. uh, it, it obviously wasn't, you know, from, from another perspective, but through all of that, I never got a single callback. Right. And I'm looking at my resume like, OK, I'm a military leader. I have an MBA. I've got great corporate experience. I'm a finance person. I'm a Lean Six Sigma black belt. Like, why would somebody not call me back? What? Um, but ultimately had to, to learn through that, you know, a certain amount of humility and, mm -hmm. and just trusting God and patience to say, OK, well, I need to just do the best I can with the job that I have. Mm -hmm. And even though it's maybe you know, unfulfilling in some ways at the moment, I just need to keep doing the best where I am. Um, and, and ultimately, I, I did move to the next company uh, a few years later um, under very different circumstances, but not necessarily because I was, you know, unsatisfied with where I was. Mm -hmm. uh, but then the other event that happened was I got laid off at one point. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at, at that point, I had been with the company about four years and again, had led a lot of projects, made a big contribution, doing a lot of good things. And, and my performance reviews were fine. The, the company agreed with all that. But for various reasons, my position was eliminated. But I remember specifically in that moment, which was totally unexpected, that when my boss told me that, the, the thought in my head was, I guess God is finished with me here, mm -hmm. right? That in my last company, I was trying to get out, but God wasn't finished with me. Right. And I had to stay a little longer. But then in the next circumstance, it's like, okay, well, your time here is done. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what that meant or where I was going, but at least in that moment, I had tons of confidence in God and, and whatever he was doing. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess to a large extent was, was uh, humble enough to accept that, you know, it's out of my control and it's not about me. Mm -hmm. and, and there's something bigger and better that God has in mind, which was world vision. So 
you know, he's taken my career and all the things I've done and learned, and now he's putting it to good work in, in building his kingdom and helping poor and, and vulnerable children around the world. Wow. Well, I appreciate you sharing that because I think sometimes we make the mistake of, you know, interviewing successful people and, um, you know, learning all their leadership tips and thinking that they've had, you know, a perfectly smooth journey. Uh, and it, you know, it's just been a, you know, a trajectory is always, you know, just up and right. And, and to know, wait a minute, there were bumps along the way. And yet it's in those moments that you're able to see um, how the truths of God's word and how Jesus as a leader um, really carries you through those transitions. Um, you know, we're, we're in a season right now. Um, this obviously will be a recording that lives on for a long time, uh, but we're in the middle as we're recording of, you know, an international pandemic, um, which has brought a lot of changes to everybody's jobs and um, the possibility of fear creeping in. Given what you just said about how you handled adversity, whether it's a pandemic or it's a personal adversity, what would you say to encourage someone right now that's in a season of adversity in their um, work setting? Well, certainly for those of us that have, you know, faith in God, that's where you have to start, is that in all circumstances, good or bad, you know, we have to, you know, start by recognizing it's not us, mm. right? That it's, it's God's plan, it's his will, it's, it's his mission in the world, and that we get to be a part of that. And so, you know, especially when you're going through hard times, you know, it's, it's maybe difficult if you're blaming yourself for that or if you're feeling trapped by that um, versus feeling like, okay, well, I don't, obviously don't want to be here, right? This is not a good circumstance or situation, but God knows that. Mm -hmm. And that if I can just be patient and trust him and, and know that he's doing work, mm -hmm. that at some point, you know, I'm going to be blessed through that. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not easy, right, at any point when you're going through those circumstances. Uh, but certainly trusting God is the best advice. Mm. Um, and I guess just on a, you know, maybe more practical ways is just continuing to keep your head up and be positive. You know, obviously, you know, God is a foundation for that encouragement and support, uh, but just always looking to what's ahead and being optimistic and, and trying to, you know, do your part, you know, kind of like what I, in my story about my own career is, well, you just got to, you know, do what God gives you, right? Each day, do the best you can with what you've got. Mm -hmm. and and make it through the end of that day and then say okay the next day let's try that again right yeah. and just take one day at a time until things improve absolutely as we think about your position um, at world vision uh, and the opportunity that you have had to do this training um, tell us how your um, leadership has been impacted through lead like jesus what does what how is that translated into your teams at world vision well, I guess the, the first thing is I would hope that my colleagues see that in me, mm -hmm. right? That they see the, the approach that I take, the attitude that I have, the way I engage with them. Uh, it's certainly not like Jesus uh, in a perfect way, uh, mm -hmm. but at least, you know, doing my best to, to love them and care about them and, and want what's best for the organization and for the people that I'm working with. And that it's not about me and, and about my success, but it's about our collective success and about the impact that, that God is trying to have on the world through us. Uh, and, and hopefully that's a good example to them, which then trickles down through the organization that they you know, will sort of embrace that same attitude. Mm. Um, I think using the Lead Like Jesus materials, uh, I did a book study with my senior staff to start with. We read through the book and discussed it uh, over a six or seven month period, just to kind of introduce them mm -hmm. to some of the concepts and give a chance to say, okay, you know, how do you guys react to that? Do you agree with it, disagree with it? Do you think this is something that can be useful to all of our teams mm -hmm. you know, as we try to build a culture? Because uh, we're a new organization, right? World Vision 70 years old, but our shared services team is anywhere from two to five years old, depending on which part of the group you're in. And so we're still very much trying to establish who are we mm -hmm. as an organization and what is our culture and what is our focus. And it's not just about the work, Mm -hmm. uh, which obviously we have to get done and deliver the services, but about how do we learn to lead like Jesus in our own lives. Uh, so, you know, by using the book and then starting to do the encounters, uh, I've been able to facilitate those in the Philippines and in Ghana and in Costa Rica 
And then we've also brought in some of the Lead Like Jesus International team uh, to facilitate uh, some Spanish language in Costa Rica for us. Uh, so we're, we're trying to get all of our staff through the encounter so that they all understand the concepts and have a chance to reconnect personally with God and with, with Jesus uh, as the source of their strength in their life, uh, but then also with the models and how they can apply that at home and at work and in the various places they go. And so, um, you know, we're not there yet in terms of the goal that I have in mind, because uh, we're still building those foundations and helping people understand. Um, but for me, the next steps is really embracing a lot of the concepts and embedding them into how we work every day. Um, so, you know, for example, we, like most organizations I mentioned earlier, have annual goals and performance reviews and processes for that. Uh, so I'm looking at that saying, okay, well, how do we take the way of the carpenter and, mm -hmm. and build that into our annual process and thinking for what goals we set for people and how we engage them and develop them through that year? And taking the, the personal feedback form and saying, okay, how do we train our supervisors to use this feedback form to engage with people and set specific plans around what they need from you and what you need from them and how you're going to work together to achieve it? And just taking some of those tools and concepts and, and embedding them in what we do every day. So is this like uh, Six Sigma KPIs meets Lead Like Jesus? Like you've brought those two worlds together? Well, we're not there yet, but that's what I'm yeah. working on, right? Because as a Lean Six Sigma person, we're in the process of implementing value stream management and helping all of our teams learn how to see the work they do. Mm -hmm. from a, a process perspective and understanding the value and who the customer is and those things. But then, in, you know, the goal is to then embed Lead Like Jesus into that so that the foundation of what we do and why we do it and how we work together mm -hmm. is leading like Jesus while driving value to our customers. That's fantastic. I, what a great example. And, you know, it, it makes me think as you're talking about um, your particular case, it, it might be a company that's 70 years old, but like you said, your particular division is new. Um, and that, you know, a real encouragement that, you know, creating a culture is so important. And it sounds like you are being intentional to create that culture and allowing Lead Like Jesus to be a part of that foundation. Uh, what, what a great um, illustration of how you can bring the business and um, the, the leadership of Jesus together and, and make a more successful division. So um, that's incredibly encouraging. Let me ask you a question. Um, uh, for our audience, certainly there are people that are in the faith space and they're in a, a Christian-led organization, whether it be a church or a nonprofit, uh, but there's also plenty of people that are in, uh, you know, corporations or secular workplaces. Um, you've, you've walked through both. Um, mm -hmm. What would you, if you could look back and tell John Sparks, who was working uh, at uh, Beckman Coulter or one of your other um, locations uh, in a secular environment, uh, if you could speak to that audience, um, what would you say as an encouragement to them of how even in a more secular environment, they can live out these truths? Well, I guess there's maybe two two ways to approach that one is for people that are christians right. and are working you know in a secular environment um that you know maybe you're not as free to discuss leading like jesus or or having biblical references or using scripture as motivation uh with your teams or the people you work with uh, but certainly in your own life you can you know kind of silently live that mm -hmm. and be an example and a model to others of, of living like jesus and leading like jesus in your own way um, that, that having that foundation, having that encouragement and knowing that you're never alone in this, mm -hmm. right? That it's not just saying, I'm going to read this book or go to this class and then I'm on my own to try to figure out how to do it. Right. Uh, but to know that, A, God is with you always, mm -hmm. right? And so in all those circumstances, if you're truly relying on him uh, and, and being in a Christian organization like World Vision is great because we pray a lot, right? So we're we're always inviting God into our meetings, into our projects, into the things that we're doing. And so we can you know, actively acknowledge that he's there. Uh, but if you're in a, in a corporate environment or a non-Christian environment, you can still do that on your own 
and make sure that you're not separating, oh, I have my home life and my work life and my church life, mm -hmm. but to say, wait a minute, my, my, my church life is, is my life all the time. And so if you're inviting you know, Jesus into your leadership at all times, mm -hmm. um, then that's certainly a way to you know, help you be a more effective leader and, and to give you the support you need in that. Uh, but then also to come back to lead like Jesus as an organization and, and be able to access those resources and, and not just do a one-time thing, but to revisit it and, mm -hmm. and, and continue to reinforce what you've learned and practice what you've learned and, and not, not let it fade away. Uh, like, like most things, you have kind of that mountaintop high, like, well, that was great. I learned so much. I feel so good. And then a few weeks or a few months later, you can barely remember any of it. So uh, we have to kind of keep reinforcing that in what we do, uh, which is why I'm trying to get us past doing an encounter to say, okay, we've done the encounter. Now, how do we take those things and put them into the workplace, you know, and, and have posters on the wall and have, you know, weekly reminders of certain things and setting up time for spiritual discipline so that you can go off and, and practice the habits and, you know, some of those things that we learn, but then don't have time to practice and revisit. Absolutely. Keeping those things, those truths in front of us is absolutely key, whether you're in an environment that allows it to be displayed on the wall or whether that's something that you are, um, you know, intentionally doing yourself. That's, that's right. a great word. John, you've talked about it from a Christian perspective. Um, talk to us about that in a, a perspective of somebody who maybe is, loves leadership but is not a believer. Sure. And, and I think in my own experience, being a student, um, on my own before college, taking leadership classes in, at university and then teaching in university, as well as just working amongst you know, plenty of non-Christians. Um, and, and the leadership models that are out there, the, the articles, the books, uh, the primary ways that people think about leadership, uh, if you really dive into it, a lot of them kind of look back and say, well, authoritarian, strong-willed, dictator kinds of leadership styles uh, tend to not be a very effective in the long term. That yes, like in a crisis situation or certain situations, maybe you need someone that's just going to take charge and get things done. And, and you see that with Jesus, right? That in certain situations, he just steps in and does it himself. Right. But, but his general style and approach is to develop others. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what most of the leadership literature leads you to as well, is that, oh, you know, the best leaders are the ones that, you know, set a vision and then support their team to achieve it. And don't try to do it themselves, but really trust their team to execute. And the best leaders are humble and, and are not going to be prideful and are not going to try to you know, be the one out in front, but they're actually going to step into the background and they're going to give praise and credit to their team when things are going well. Uh, but then they're going to step in and, and take the blame and deflect criticism when things aren't going well. Uh, and so, you know, whatever books or articles you're reading and the various theories and models that are out there, even from a secular perspective, in most cases, you can look at the life of Jesus and his leadership and say, oh, I can see how Jesus perfectly modeled all of those things that all of the non-Christians say are the best way to lead, mm. right? So even if you're not coming from a biblical perspective or a Christian background, if you just look at Jesus objectively and read his life and look at the stories and, and see how he led, then you can make those connections between leading like Jesus and what all the non-Christians research and, and theory tells us we should be doing to be good leaders anyway. That is such a great point. And John, for those who are not familiar with Lead Like Jesus, it really is intended to be a curriculum for any workplace, not just a faith-based workplace. It is really looking at him as a leader, uh, not outside of even Christianity. So to your point exactly, you're right. He is truly um, the model of leadership. So Thank you so much for that insight. Well, John, as we wrap up our time together, um, I just want to thank you so much. Um, such, there's so many things that you said and didn't, and, and just are living out. Um, I think maybe at the end, what you just said in terms of, you know, it's one thing to read a book. It's another thing to apply those principles to your life. And it looks like that not only are you doing that personally, but when you talk about the heart and the habits and the hands um, and the head of Lead Like Jesus, all of those different things, um, you've kept that in front of you and now you're enabling your entire team to benefit from that. So thank you for the way that you lead like Jesus. Thank you for coming on today and sharing your, your story and your journey with Lead Like Jesus. And we just wanna encourage 
encourage anyone that is uh, watching or listening to this um, that you would go to leadlikejesus.com. There are resources there. Uh, what John referred to is there. Learning about encounters is there. Um, tons of great resources to help you as a person of faith. Um, and also just looking at Jesus himself as a leadership model. So thank you for joining us for Leadership Conversations. We look forward to talking to you again soon. Okay, thanks.